Hey guys, Tech Manny here, also known as Matthew Vera, and today I'm going to be reviewing my Tascam DP02 USB interface. So, without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> Guys, so today, as I said before, we're going to be reviewing the DP02 USB interface. Now, I started using this a few months ago because I sold my Q502 USB, the Behringer one, because I outgrew it and I needed to expand in my horizons. So I started using this and I knew how to just do everything. I, I read the manual. It's very, very easy to use. Even though this thing is discontinued, I absolutely love it. It's very useful. The only downside to it is that it has only two XLR inputs, not three or four. You can see all these knobs here. It's an eight channel USB interface, and I'll show you how you can create, you can create eight tracks. So let's just jump right into it. I'll zoom in and we'll start from this side and then we'll work our way on this side. So let's get to it. Alrighty, so starting on this side, we have the USB here and I'll explain about the USB later. We have the D DC in, digital out. We have a MIDI out, that's pretty darn good. A line output, it's an RCA. A stereo mix thing, I have no idea what that is. We have a send, return left and right. I never used this and this and this. I only concentrated on the USB and the XLRs over here. Now, as you saw, there's input A and input B. These are XLRs and then you have your 1 4th inch jacks here. And there's a switch, you can, you can switch it between guitar for these and then mic line for these. So first we have our line A and line B input. These knobs control the gain of the XLR or whatever you're going to use. You have your assign A and your assign B. You have your FX, you have your phantom power, you absolutely need that. And your input mode is when you switch it and you get to press it to stereo or mono. Okay, moving down, we have our high and low knobs across eight tracks. We have a frequency button here, and when you press this, the display screen here it will show the frequencies, and you can adjust the frequencies of each high and low gain. Across the eight tracks, you have your FX send, and that connects to here, and you can turn it on by here. You have your pan left and right across the eight tracks. Now we get to the fun part. We have eight sliders here, including the master. And all these coordinate, this is very weird. All of these things coordinate to A and B. You have mute, and then you have the record. And I'll show you all that later. Now moving across the board, we have your record, play, stop, fast forward, and rewind. All these buttons here are almost everything you need to control everything else over here. When you press this and this together, this rewinds all the way to the beginning. And when you hit play, you can play through whatever you recorded. Press stop. If you press this and this together, it will record whatever you're trying to record on the eight channels. We have all these buttons here that coordinate to the CD, which is these, and shift. Now you see shift and you're like, what is shift? Basically, you know how on a keyboard you press shift, it turns things to capitals. This button does exactly the same. When you press it, this act activates all these orange things right here and everything else on the board. So when you press shift, Instead of this being rewind, when you press shift, it says insert. Now we come to my favorite part here is this is a data dial. Very useful. We have our no exit, yes enter buttons. 
this is your cursor. It doesn't go in like enter. You have to use enter like this. You can either use this or this. It doesn't really matter. I find this one very fast. Of course, this is your power button that turns on and off everything. And remember that shift, when you press shift, this is for the CD. You can do erase and finalize, point edit, system info, title, and song info. And then without shift, it's eject CD, track editing, home, menu, song. Why does it say eject? Well, I will show you a picture that you can see your phones, you can see your punch, and you see the CD input. And you slide your CD in, a recorded one or a brand new one. You can play songs and you can record songs to the CD. Over here, this is your phones knob, which means this controls how much is going to your phones overall. The audio on this thing isn't as strong, which means when you're trying to record something, it's not strong as, as you want it to be. And when I was using this, I had to go into Audacity and normalize it quite a bit to make it loud. And you have your display here. Here's a better view of it. When you're using the data, move everything over. You can use the cursor, move it over to seconds. And then you can move the cursor over to more. It does the minutes. It's very, very simple. And if you stop recording and you rewind everything, you press stop and rewind. And it goes all the way to the beginning. Alrighty guys, we're almost done. I have a few more things to show you and then we'll wrap this up. So as I was saying before, for both input A and B, you can assign any to these. So. For input A, if you want to go to one and two, you can easily press assign A and press this, these two. They're blinking. The problem is, is that you cannot do a third one at all. It only limits you to two. You release that, they stop blinking. Now you're saying, okay, I can record. So when you press record, you're not getting anything on your meters here. You think it's this. You're like, okay, that should work. You press record, it's not working. And then you think it's the slider. Now you can probably hear. When you press record, it's not recording anything. So what you have to do is press this again. And when it's blinking, it's armed to record. And as I said, when you press play and record at the exact same time, it will record. So you see green, all right? Now when you press both, you will see both green and red. That means it's actually recording right now. And then you see the access. It tells you you are recording and it's transferring data. And if you just want to stop the recording, you just press stop, press rewind, and then you press play and you get to hear whatever you recorded. Alrighty guys, one more thing and we will wrap this up. So. As I said, I was talking about the USB, right? The USB is not a live thing. So if you connect the USB to your computer, you won't be able to record it live. So what you have to do is that when you're done recording everything, you saved everything, what you have to do is go to menu. All right, and you see all these options. You scroll, scroll down to USB, press enter and this says connecting to PC are you sure you press yes so this thing is not live at all you have to save everything and then it will work and then you can you have to save everything export it to make it go to your computer open your USB and then you can transfer it there so basically that's the only downfall to this is that it only has two XLRs you have to go through all this just to connect the USB to your computer. Everything on this thing is not live. Anyways, I hope this wasn't confusing. I'm not fully experienced with everything on this thing. I only looked up the major things that I needed was recording and transferring to USB to my computer. That's about it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Tascam DP02. This is the Tech Manny sign off. See you later guys, bye.